Hi, thanks for tuning in. Due to some of the comments we've received on our other videos, we decided to print something that would be useful around the house. My wife's been asking me for a while, so we're going to use the CR10 to print a blow dryer and straightener holder that will attach to the inside of the vanity door in our bathroom. I've already opened Fusion 360 and I've made a new project file. And we'll start with a sketch as we always do. Uh, in this case, I'm using a top-down view. And I normally don't move my mouse around this fast, but we're gonna do this at four times the speed. I'm making the back plate of the bracket that's going to attach to the door of the uh, vanity. I'm choosing kind of an arbitrary depth. It's gonna be about 20 millimeters from top to bottom and five millimeters thick should be strong enough. There's not heavy items that are gonna be hanging off this. It's just a blow dryer. So here I'm going to draw two circles. Uh, one is going to be the, the diameter of the blow dryer nozzle, if you will. That's gonna go into it, like a little holster. Uh, and the other one is going to be a circle with a diameter of 10 millimeters larger than the inner diameter, giving us a, a wall of that circle of five millimeters thick as well. Everything's going to be just for Simplicity's sake, about five millimeters thick. This little block here will provide some additional support between the uh, circle cylinder component and the uh, wall of the mounting bracket. As I pause here from time to time, um, I'm actually taking my calipers and measuring the diameter in different spots of the uh, blow dryer to figure out how far I want it to sit inside the bracket. So we'll take both the main component of the circle and the bracket, the little square piece attaching it, and extrude those by pressing E on the keyboard. or going to uh, the extrude option in the menu and extrude them the same depth as the rest of the uh, bracket was, so 20 millimeters. And I've just extended the bracket a little bit longer to give us some more space to play with. In this design, I'm not taking into account any kind of cable management um, for now. She'll just wrap the cable around the blow dryer and straightener as, as she has been, but ideally there'd be a little cable caddy or something. So that's basically it for the blow dryer side of things. Uh, I will taper that, the inside of that um, cylinder uh, near the end. I'm not exactly sure what the taper it is. It'll be a little bit of trial and error. So we'll do the same kind of thing for the straightener. We'll have a little square bracket to beef up the connection to the, the back plate. And I'm just measuring the width of the two little um, ceramic pads, if you will. I'm not sure what they're called on the straightener. Hers is a really wide one, so it's not one of the little like pencil ones. Just drawing a square and then I'll eventually kind of hollow out the square and make it five millimeter thick walls. I'm just looking at the uh, depth of that little block that we use to reinforce the connection. Having some difficulties here. <laughs> I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I don't really care if they're exactly the same distance apart. And I'm centering the block on the um, larger block, if you will. Um, just snapping it to the midpoint of the larger line there. Making sure the depth is correct. And then realizing that there's only five millimeters difference between the inner and outer diameter. So that would only give us a two and a half millimeter wall in that first cylinder. So I'm correcting that there. And now I'm going to do the same thing to this, stretch it out a little bit and make it five millimeter walls. Here I'm just going to manually assign the same kind of distance for this block as the other block. And then here's the inner square or rectangle to hollow out this block. So choosing that kind of outer border and the block connection piece there, you can then extrude those two shapes down 20 millimeters. I'm gonna extend this wall by using the push-pull or the letter Q on your keyboard 
just to give us a little bit more space as well. I'm giving myself the option of uh, adding three screws, one in the center and one on each of the end little tabs if I decide to screw this to the inside of the door. But for now, my plan is probably to just two-way tape it just because of where I have to mount it. I don't really have a solid piece of wood. The doors are kind of like that faux wood inner panel. And so what I'm going to do is on the inside of this square here, I'm gonna add a triangular kind of brace across it. So if you can imagine, uh, it's almost like scissors in shape, right? So if you can imagine one of e each of the blades will go on either side of this triangular structure, which will help stop it from you know, falling right through the, the square hole. And I'm just taking some measurements off to the side to figure out what kind of an angle this should be. And I've determined that the top actually shouldn't be a point in a typical triangle. It should have kind of a distance of 20 millimeters between each of the legs. So I'm just kind of roughly sketching out what it'll look like and making sure that the top piece is 20 millimeters across. Again, having difficulty selecting that. Okay, so let's just connect these pieces to find that that's 20 millimeters. Try to set some constraints so those pieces stay connected. And undo. <laughs> so here I'm setting a construction line, which is a line just to use as a reference, and I've snapped it to the midpoint of um, the larger upper surface so that I can use that as a, as a reference point for centering um, this kind of triangular shape. So I drew a there, 20 millimeters distance between those two points using that construction line as a centering anchor. And then the bottom here, make sure that that is connected. Come on. There, and set the distance of those to be 25. There we go. So now we kind of have the triangular shape and we will extrude that so that it connects to the adjoining wall. I'm just confirming my measurements off screen. There we go. So generally that's the, the shape we're gonna have. Um, this is just a first crack at it and I'm gonna use the draft tool to taper the inside of that cylinder. It looks kind of hard to see there quickly, but that cylinder is no longer a cylinder. And we're ready to print. So we printed this at 0.2 millimeter layer height with three perimeters and about a 30% infill. It took about nine and a bit hours with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on the CR10. And I'd probably make some changes if I was to do this again, but for a first crack, I'll see if this works out and if it you know, fits the dimensions of the objects that are going in it. This is the side for the blow dryer that will go in and it's tapered down to the bottom, so it's a little bit narrower at the bottom. And then I've left space for three screws to go through if I chose to mount it to a solid wood portion of the door, but I'll likely just use a strip of two-way tape along the back here and mount it securely. And then here is the triangular shape that I was showing on the video that the straightener paddles will go like this and it will stop it from falling all the way through. Um, we'll see how this works out. I might make some revisions. I might even add uh, little one millimeter kind of pilot holes to guide where I should drill it out for screws if I decide to put that in. And I'd probably chamfer or bevel these edges so that it's a little more organic looking and smooth, at least on the outside, so you don't you know, kind of catch yourself on any of these corners and make it look a little bit more polished. But all in all, I, I think she'll be happy and glad I finally got around to making this. Hopefully you found that informative. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, let us know the types of things you'd like to see below and like and subscribe to get notified when we upload more content. Thanks for watching.